Hallelujah. Welcome to Amazing Grace. I'm Pastor Kofi Osei too. Here once again with you to share the incorruptible word of God. Today we continue the series we started a couple of weeks ago talking about recognizing your potential mate. Recognizing your potential mate. You know, uh, I have decided, you know, to do this series because the Lord was dealing with me how there are a lot of youngsters or youth coming up they have a lot of questions that, you know, as far as relationships are concerned, and it's about marriage in particular, you know, and being a father with two uh, uh, grown children in their 20s, which I know they have been asking those questions themselves. So I decided by the grace of God to talk about such a vital issue to prepare our children to come to that knowledge how to make the right decision and to recognize their potential mate. So last week I showed you there was a, 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 a statement or a saying that I posted at the end of this, uh, the series, no, at the end of, sorry, the episode. And I'm going to start today with that uh, uh, saying so that we can wake up quickly and then we'll take it from there. It says that never look for a good face for it will turn old one day. Never look for a good skin, it will wrinkle one day. Never look for a hot body, it will change one day. Never look for a nice hair, it will turn white one day. Instead, look for a loyal heart that will love you forever. Oh, hallelujah. I'll read that again. Say, so never look for a good face, it will turn old one day. And never look for a good skin, it will wrinkle one day. Never look for a hot body, it will change one day. And never look for nice hair, it will turn white one day. Instead, look for a loyal heart that will love you forever. Hallelujah. This is uh, a saying that I came across some time ago, and I, I love it so much that I put it aside that one day, I mean, the series is going to be ideal to share it. And it's so true that because when relationship, when you look for a partner or a spouse based on looks or physical looks alone, many a times you can go, you can go wrong because these things fade away. In this day and age that we live in, these things can be bought at the store. Beauty can be bought at the store. People can, you know, have hair, nails and everything or artificial so if that is what you are you are going by to choose or select a partner you can make a big mistake but the bible has given us his own standards which we've been de we do, dealing with the bible says in the book of proverbs the chapter of 18 the verse of 22 it said that whoso whoso findeth a wife Find a good thing and obtain it favor of the Lord. I read it again. Say, whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtain it favor from the Lord. Oh, I'm going to break this down for you. You see the word, say, the key, in the, uh, the word that is being highlighted or being uh, uh, emphasized in this verse is the word find it. And the word find it, if you look it up, it means matza. M A T S A in the in the Hebrew language and the 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 meaning actually of it is that to to discover or to recognize or to obtain attain you know all these words as you know words that are denoting something that it, it just don't come you have to diligently search or look in order to recognize to in order to discern so the bible is saying that here, God has already prepared that wife, that, but it is up to you to find based on your, your diligent search and what you search for. You see, attraction is the initial uh, 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 criteria or the initial thing that brings two people together. Physical attraction, of course. But then, 
it, if you you base your whole uh, decision on the physical attraction alone, you can go wrong. As I said earlier on, as the sayings we showed before said. So there are other things that you're supposed to look for, which is the spiritual attraction. See, the attraction has to be twofold. There has to be the physical attraction that will bring you initial to the person, and then, as we call it in there and in, in the, our day, during the dating process. Or when you're getting to know each other, you look for the spiritual attraction, which is basically the character and the reputation and all of that put together. Because those are the things that will last forever, you know, for last for a long time. But if you look for the physical attraction, it will not. I'm not saying that physical attraction is not important. That's what I'm saying. Because that's what will bring you initially together. Or, or, or attract you to one another. But then, physical attraction can come in various forms. It, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's not limited to sight alone. A person can be attracted to another person, maybe the way they talk or their voice, or maybe the way they laugh, or maybe the way they walk. There's so many things that physically can attract you to another person. But that is only superficial. It shouldn't last, I mean, it shouldn't re finish there. But as you get to know the person, now you have to look for some deep things that are embedded in them, some character traits. A character is something that has been edged, means carazo, you know, from the word character. Uh, carazo uh, is the Greek. And it means something that has been edged into the, uh, the fabric of, of a person or into the, the inner being of a person. And that is something that will last long. And you will see that the scriptures that we're going to be looking at will point to that. I'm going to show you some scriptures later on and you will see that exactly that's what the Bible was talking about. And the Bible also says in the book of Proverbs, the chapter of 31, the verse of 30 says, Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be blessed. You see? See, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, what? Character. She shall be praised. Meaning here, the Bible is telling us that beauty, which is a physical attribute, is vain. Meaning that it's fleeting. You know, it's, 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 it's vanity. It's something that can, you know, disappear. Or vanish. Okay? But a woman that feareth the Lord, that's a character. Like somebody that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. She is the one that you have to look and admire and praise because the character that that person has, not the beauty. So you should be attracted to somebody more by the character instead of the beauty. Because if you go by the beauty alone, according to this scripture, beauty is very vain, you know, and favor is deceitful. Today you can have favor and tomorrow you may not. So you cannot base on favor to choose a partner. Neither can you base on beauty alone to choose a partner. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So character is highlighted, very, very important, you know, as far as attraction is concerned. So you notice that I've been dealing with attraction because that is the initial stage. You just don't meet somebody and say, I'm going to marry him. You see, we live in a day and age, unlike in, our, in, in the olden days when our, for, our fathers used to choose their spouses for their children. Knowing the background of the family, knowing the character traits of the family, the reputation of the family, they take all of that into consideration and say, well, this uh, a child from that family will be a good spouse for you based on what we know, trust me. And the whole family will get behind you and there will be a lot of counseling and advice for, you know, and you, you have people around you that you can go to for godly counseling and advice. But in this day and age, these things are non-existent. It's hard to find. You know, we put so much emphasis on other things and neglect such a vital thing as marriage. Or, or, or finding a spouse, a lifetime venture that needs to be treated with all seriousness. And thank God that he did not leave us clueless or he did not leave us without any solution to that. He devoted one whole book in, his, in the Bible that deals with this issue. How to find a partner, you know, how to, uh, and trust me, by the time you finish, we'll finish with this series, you'll be so blessed. Because it's going to show you even 
Anyway, let's just go on. I just want to whet your appetite more. So now we're going to look at a scripture in the book of Songs of Solomon, and then we'll move from them. This is, this is a song that, a, a, a whole book that God has devoted to uh, 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 spousal attraction, you know, romance and love and sex and all of that is in this very book. And believe you me, if you take your time to read this book and if you understand it, it's very poetic. So if you have to be somebody who loves poetry to be able to understand it the way it was written. So listen to what he said. This is uh, the first encounter between King Solomon and his first wife. You know, remember Solomon was somebody who had 700 concubines and 300 wives. So many people say that, wouldn't that discredit him from being somebody who should speak about marriage? What does he know about marriage if he have 700 wives? And, but at the same time, he can be the very one who can speak about marriage because since maybe he's been with so many women, maybe he knows something about women. We understand. So it's, it's, it's a, a catch-22 situation. But then again, this is something that God ordained that through the Holy Spirit that it should be written that we should learn from this. So if you're going to, we're going to see something from just the first two verses of the chapter of one of the song of Solomon. It says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for thy love is better than wine because of the savor of thy good ointment. Thy name is as as, is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. You know what? I'm going to read it from another translation. So bring it to our everyday English instead of the King James so that we'll have a better understanding because when you're reading these scriptures here, it's good to have a better, I mean, a good understanding of it so that you'll be able to Apply to our everyday life. This was written in, 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 in the old days, in the olden days. And in our age, age, the language has been a little bit modified. So I'll read it in our everyday English so that you can get a better understanding of what it's talking about. Okay. Uh, the book of Songs of Solomon. I'm going to read... Uh, the same scripture, I'll read a New Living Translation. It's one of my favorites. And I believe, oh, can't get it here. Reception. Okay, I'll read an easy to read version, the ERV. Uh, it's uh, Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon. The Song of Songs or Song of Solomon. The chapter of one. Yes. Okay. And it reads. It says, cover me with kisses, for your love is better than wine. Your perfume smells wonderful, but your name is sweeter than the best perfume. That is why the young woman loves you. I read it again. Say, cover me with your kisses, for your love is better than wine. Your perfume smells wonderful, but your name is sweeter than the best perfume. That is why the young women love you. Here, this is the, the, the woman speaking, addressing Solomon. That the attraction that he has towards Solomon here is twofold. Physical attraction, because he said, well, kiss me. With the, the other one, the verse will say, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth, right? And so the attraction here is talking about, first of all, the physical attraction to kiss him with the mouth. Then he went on to say that, for your perfume smells wonderful. See, another attraction, just by the, the smell, his, his smell. Because in the olden days, the men at the time, you know, were not, the, 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 uh, rarely took a shower. So they normally put ointments and, and, and perfumes, oils, fragrant per, uh, uh, oils around them, their body. Just like then, in this day and age, a man will use cologne or a deodorant. So... Here, she's saying that not only do I want you to kiss me because your, your, your perfume smells so nice that I want to get closer to you. I want to be cozy with you. And, and you see, this is a physical attraction. But then he moved on further to say that, he moved on to say that your name is sweeter than your perfume. 
your name what is the name talking about the name is talking about the reputation and what is the reputation reputation is based on character because without your uh, uh, your name represent what your reputation if a person have a good name he have a good reputation if a person have a bad name he has a bad reputation which is what based on or or or, or built by what a character your reputation is basically built by what your character because you build a good reputation by the things you do the character who you are so here you see that not only is the woman talking about the the physical attraction the things that attracted her to solomon you know that he, he she wants to kiss him but also the reputation the spirit i mean the spiritual attraction and he, she went on to say no wonder the other women the young women love you meaning that all the women that this lady has talked to they all said good things about solomon so you see the reputation also counted so much that beside the the, the physical attraction there was also some spiritual attraction based on the character so there is another scripture that also emphasizes this 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 uh, 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 principle, which we're gonna look in the book of Genesis, right? The chapter of twenty-four, Genesis chapter twenty-four. You're not gonna see it on your screen, but uh, I'm gonna read. This is a story. That I'm gonna give you the background. This is a story where uh, Abraham, when he was very old. And decided where he's going to arrange the marriage for his son, Isaac. So he called one his uh, his main chief servant of the house, Eliezer, and said to Eliezer, "Put your hands under my thigh and swear unto me that you will go to my 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 family to to find a wife for my son Isaac." And now we're going to take. From now to the end of the program, I'm going to read some of the scriptures to you and point certain things out to you that you will see that even though the physical attraction came later at the end, but it was still there, but then we were initially going to see the spiritual attraction. And I want you, there are some key points that we're going to denote or we're going to uh, uh, pick out from this scripture. So reading from Genesis chapter 24, I'll read it from the verse of 1 onwards. And I'll keep exposing it. And it says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me into the, this land. Must I needs bring thy son again into the land from which from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou that thou thou bring not the, my son Thera again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me and and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. So you see. Abraham gave his, uh, his servant a command that go to my kindred. Go to my kindred. Why would Abraham say to the servant, go to my family and find me a wife? And not to find a wife in his, where he was living. Why? Because when you want to find a wife that God has ordained for you, you have to make, narrow the pool and limit yourself to, as a believer, to only your family. So in our day and age, the family will be what? The body of Christ. So the first thing you look for is that you have to limit yourself within the family. All right? So Abraham said to don't marry among the Canaanites. 
or the, the uncircumcised Philistine, but go to my kindred, to my family, and marry a wife. In this day and age, this principle is still working. It's very rare. It's true that you see intermarriages, yes, but I would say about 80 to 90% of the people that marry, marry within their race. Hardly do you see an Indian man or woman marrying a uh, 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 a black man or a black woman or or, 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 or an Asian or an, a Chinese person marrying. Of course it happened, but it's not many. The majority marry within themselves. This is something that God told the children of Israel when they were living that do not intermarry with the people that I'm taking you to. Marry within yourself. Why? Because when you share something in common, for example, you have the same religion with somebody, it's easier to raise your children to follow what you believe. Imagine you are a Christian and your husband is a Buddhist or a Muslim. How are you going to raise your children? So here, Abraham, first thing he said to is make sure you go to my family. Why? Because they share the same values like I do. So then he said to her, uh, the, the servant again, when you go, the servant asked, what if the woman don't want to come? He said, well, if they don't want to come, then I will set you free. So it means that Abraham was expecting a woman who is what? God fear. Okay. If you read the whole scripture, which time is not going to be on my side to read it. But this is what Abraham said. Say, make sure that the woman that you see or you find, you will bring first to here. Bring that woman. So the woman should be somebody who will be willing to act on faith. To believe that God is, God's hand is in the marriage and therefore will leave the family and then come to Isaac in a foreign land. It takes faith to do that. Okay, so the first thing, the woman should be of the family of Abraham. Secondly, the woman should be willing to leave the land where she is and then come to the land where Isaac is. That takes a lot of faith. It has to be somebody who is not only just a, 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 a professing Christian, but an active living Christian, somebody who is serving God wholeheartedly and is willing to take the leap of faith to leave what he's so comfortable with and move on. Because a woman who is not ready to leave the family and cling to the husband is not ready to marry. So that is something that Isaac, uh, Abraham was telling the servant that look for that woman, that she should be willing to leave the family and come. And then thirdly, he said that this woman will be shown to you by the angel of the Lord. That means God has a hand. God has already prepared. God knows who that person is. But he is going to show it to you. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm going to fast forward it to the point when the, uh, 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 Eliezer went to the city. And this is the verse of 11. And he said, and he made his camels to kneel down. No, sorry. I'll go back to the verse of 10. It says, and the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Okay? And he said, Listen to what he did. The first thing he did when he got there by the, by, by the well, this guy, Eliezer, this man, Eliezer, sat down, caused the ten camels to rest, and he said, okay, first thing he did was he prayed. So you see, prayer is also very, very important. If you ask God to guide and direct you, to lead you to the right person, you have to pray. And listen to what the, the, the servant did. He prayed. He said, and he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass, that the damsel or the girl to whom I shall say, Let down that pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camel drinks also. Let the same be the, that, thou shalt, that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Oh my God. This man made some, 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 some serious demand. Say, said, God, I pray that I'm here by the well. And by this token, I will know that it is you who has appointed this man. By this token, let me know the woman you have selected for me. Let the woman that I will say to, or the girl that I will say to, 
give me water to drink. I pray thee. And she will say to me, oh yes, here's what I drink. And I'm also going to fetch water for your camels to drink. Let that be that woman. Oh my God. What is this Eliezer trying to prove there? Not only is this woman her supposed to be from Abraham's family. Secondly, not only is she supposed to, to be able to leave the family and come with Eliezer unto Isaac in a foreign land. Thirdly, not only is she suppo uh, she's supposed to be identified by God, but also this woman has to have a servant spirit. For her to say, I'm going to serve fresh water for you and for your 10 camels. Do you know how much water it takes for a camel to drink to be full? According, I was looking at it uh, uh, on, 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 on Google. It's about 25 gallons of water. So imagine if she used to fetch water for 10 camels, 25 ga times 10. That's about 250 gallons. And this woman, the Bible says, if you read further, when Rebecca came and the guy, uh, 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 Eliezer said to him, Oh, hi, could you fetch me some water to drink? So, yes, I will do it. And I'll fetch water for your camels too. And the Bible said that she went back and forth back until all the camels were, 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 were drunk to their full. And then she ran to the house and told the family. What am I talking about? The character of a person is what God wants you to find. That's why he said that he who find it a good thing, find it a wife. As for the physical attraction, everybody, you can just find it easily. You look at a person and say, oh, oh, she's beautiful. It's not hard to find, but to find the character, the hidden the hidden things within, that is what the Bible means when it said that he who findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Because it is something that is hidden. It's not easily visible to the naked eye for you to so see it. But you have to search to find. So, in order for you to find the right spouse, look for the hidden things, the character traits that are that will last long and will stand the test of time. Oh, hallelujah. Time is not on my side, but I know you're going to be so blessed at the end of this series. So, when you come in, take a pen and paper to make notes, write things down because it's going to bless you. If you are not born again, all what I'm saying will not benefit you. But if you be only born again, just say this after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me with your blood. I invite you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. And if you have prayed that prayer, you've been born again. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.